You write that you work on developing conceptual frameworks for understanding unconventional cognition. So the kind of thing we've been talking about, I just like the term unconventional cognition. And you want to figure out how to detect, study, and communicate with a thing. You've already mentioned a few examples, but what is unconventional cognition? Is it as simply as everything outside, outside of what we define usually as cognition, cognitive science, the stuff going on between our ears? Or is there some deeper way to get at the fundamentals of what is cognition? Yeah, I think like, uh, and, and I'm certainly not the only person who works in unconven un unconventional um, cognition. So it's the term used. Yeah, that's one that I, so, so I've coined a number of weird terms, but that's not one of mine like that. That's an existing thing. So, so for example, somebody like Andy Adamaski, who, um, I don't know if you've, if you've had him on, if you haven't, you, you should, he's a, he's a, he's a, he's a, you know, very interesting guy. He's a computer scientist and he does unconventional cognition and slime molds and all kinds of weird, um, he's, he's a real weird, weird cat, really interesting anyway. So, so that's, um, um, you know, there's a bunch of terms that I've come up with, but that's not one of mine. So I think like many terms, that one is is really defined by the times, meaning that unconventional cognitive, th things that are unconventional cognition today are not going to be considered unconventional cognition at some point. Uh, it's one of those, it's one of those things. And so it's, you know, it's, it's, it's this, it's this really deep question of how do you recognize, communicate with, um, um, classify cognition when you cannot rely on the typical milestones, right? So, so typical, um, you know, again, if you stick with the, with the, uh, the history of life on earth, like these, these exact model systems, you would say, ah, here's a particular structure of the brain. And this one has fewer of those. And this one has a bigger frontal cortex and this one, right? So these are, these are landmarks that, that we're, that we're used to. And, and, and it allows us to make very, um, kind of rapid judgments about things. But if you can't rely on that, either because you're looking at a synthetic thing or or an engineered thing or an alien thing, then what do you do, right? How do you, and so, and so that's what I'm really interested in. I'm interested in mind in all of its possible implementations, not just the obvious ones that we know from, from looking at brains here on Earth. Whenever I think about something like unconventional cognition, I think about cellular automata. Mm -hmm. I'm just ca captivated by the beauty of the thing. Mm -hmm. The fact that from simple little uh, objects, you can create some such beautiful complexity that very quickly you forget about the individual objects mm. and you see the things that it creates as its own organisms. That blows my mind every time. Yeah. Like, honestly, I could full time just eat mushrooms and watch cellular tom. Doesn't you, don't even have to do mushrooms. Uh, just just cellular automata. It feels like I mean, from the engineering perspective, I love when a very simple system captures something really powerful because then you can study that system to understand something fundamental about complexity about life on Earth. 